We all need stolen bases in fantasy baseball, but let's face it, not everybody's going to grab Trey Turner or Adalberto Mondesi in their draft. There's not a lot of speed to go around once you get past the first few rounds, or is there? I'm going to talk about some stolen base sleepers that you can grab outside of the top 150 players according to current ADP right now. Just in 2020, there were only 10 players that even reached double-digit steals. Last time we had a full season in 2019, only 15 players reached the 20 steal mark. There aren't a lot of guys you can count on to really carry you in that category. But I've identified a few guys here that are projected, most of them at least, to get 20 steals or more. And like I said, they're going in the later rounds of drafts. So why not pounce on them now instead of trying to reach for speed early? One of my favorite players to grab everywhere, and unfortunately his ADP keeps climbing now around the 180 range, whereas a couple of weeks ago he was outside the top 200, but Leode Taveras of the Texas Rangers, he could be the leadoff guy there, and this is one of my favorite draft targets everywhere, and not even just because of the speed. He has the power that he could hit about 15 home runs or more. He's not going to sink your average, and if he hits at the top of the lineup, he could score a bunch of runs too. I know it's not the most dynamic offense, but still... Anybody who's going to hit leadoff, you know, is going to get a ton of plate appearances, and that just helps all the counting stats. Tavares, mostly known for his speed and his glove, but you know what? This is a guy who, like I said, has some power too and can produce in multiple categories. ATC is projecting him for 24 stolen bases on the season. That is definitely the type of player that you can plug in as your third or fourth outfielder if you pass on one of those top guys early in the draft. So this is a guy I'm keeping my eye on very closely. There is some risk. Obviously, we don't know for sure if he's going to be in the starting lineup week in and week out, but definitely worth the risk based on the upside. Now, Andres Jimenez is somebody who we know has the speed and the positional versatility qualifies at both middle infield spots, which is helpful. The downside is that now he's with the Cleveland Indians, uh, an offense that just struggled a lot last year and the team that's really not getting better based on their offseason moves. But this might benefit him because of the playing time. Now, the only thing is, is he going to be the regular shortstop or is it going to be fellow former Met Ahmed Rosario? This could be a position battle between the two. Jimenez is favored to win the job right now. But the fact that the Indians re-signed Cesar Hernandez to probably play every day at second base does hurt a little bit. So we'll see. Right now, Jimenez has the upper hand. But again, that's something to watch throughout spring training. Now, the upside here, again, 20-plus steals, projected for 21 steals on the season. His ADP right now is 197, according to the expert consensus on Fantasy Pros. So it's not going to cost you a whole lot to find out. And again, this is somebody who you can plug in as a utility guy, not depending on as a starter. You can plug him in the middle infield spot. And even if he just gets you the occasional steal, that's better than you can get from most guys in that range. Manny Margot was a high prospect for the Padres a couple years ago. Didn't really pan out, moved on to Tampa Bay. Well, didn't do a whole lot, especially in terms of fantasy value last year. Did come on a little bit in the postseason, as did some other Tampa Bay outfielders. But Margot's still flying under the radar just because, again, kind of a glove-first guy, a little bit of everything, but he doesn't stand out in any category, except he still does have speed. The power hasn't quite caught up to what people thought it could um, back when he was in the minors but this is somebody who again projected for 23 steals on the season seems like he's locked in for pretty much everyday playing time so a sneaky value here projected for 22 stolen bases on the season and uh, this could be a sneaky value here going way down to 272 spot in most drafts so kind of a last round flyer if you will not bad for bench depth. If you want some cheap speed, this is definitely a guy to look for. And speaking of cheap speed, it doesn't get much cheaper than Miles Straw. And look, kind of like Tavares earlier, Straw could actually be the leadoff guy for this team. The Astros, which are a much better lineup than the Rangers. But the problem is, unlike Tavares, there's absolutely zero power here. So you know what you're getting with Straw. He has the potential to steal maybe upwards of 30 bases if he's an everyday player. A lot of people just don't think he's going to hold on to that job. But look, there's some question marks here in Houston because with Springer gone, that leaves an opening there. And they've had some injuries throughout the preseason. So Straw definitely could be a guy that holds down that center field spot. Now, as of right now, roster resource has changed it. And they have Straw penciled in for ninth, which is quite a big difference than the leadoff spot. 
But still, think about the run scoring potential there. If they have, as they predict, Carlos Correa hitting leadoff and Altuve, and then you got Bregman. So if he's on base ahead of those guys, you can bet there's plenty of runs to be scored. Again, we're talking about an end of draft flyer here, bench depth, not somebody you're gonna count on to start, but the stolen base potential is tremendous. One of my favorite late round outfielders is Rymel Tapia of the Colorado Rockies. Look, that lineup seems to be going a little bit downhill in terms of losing no one or not, or a lot of question marks as far as which prospect actually is gonna play and who's gonna step up. But Tapia is almost sure to be at the top of that lineup. And look, as long as they keep Trevor Story in town, then the run scoring potential is there. Now, this steal upside isn't as high as some of the other guys we've talked about. He is projected for 19, could hover around 20. That is still really solid for a guy who, again, isn't even projected to be uh, a top three outfielder for fantasy purposes in most 12-teamers. So you're not paying a high price to get him. And what I love is that he actually was going to be a big help in terms of average, a career 285 hitter in the majors hit 321 in the short season in 2020. So this is somebody who will help you in average and get you some steals and runs. Of course, the power isn't there, but we're talking speed here, not power. And then my last pick is definitely someone that's a total lottery ticket here. But my very last pick of the TGFBI Great Fantasy Baseball Invitation League was Taylor Trammell. If you follow prospects, you know this is a guy who made a name for himself. Uh, MVP of the Futures game a couple years ago was a high-end prospect, but it's bounced now between the Reds and the Padres and the Mariners. Well, now he might have found a home, and this is a guy that was expected to kind of start the season in the minors, but he is having a hot spring so far, and he might just outright win the left field job. Uh, there's not a lot of competition there really being put up. So this is somebody who has 70 grade speed. We know that the Mariners love to run. This is a team that ran, attempted the second most steals per game last season, and they were first in 2019. This is a team that averaged the third most stolen base attempts per game last season, and they were first in 2019, attempting the most steals so anybody who's on base is going to get the green light. I know a lot of people are on Dylan Moore as kind of that sleeper here, but I'm looking deeper and going for Trammell because he costs you absolutely nothing. Barely doesn't even really have an ADP. We're talking about like 478 right now. So a last round pick for sure. And the stolen base potential is there. He should be able to hit for average, uh, assuming the strides he's made at the plate continue. Again, you're not getting any power here but that's okay. That's not the concern. If you can come away with your very last round pick with 20, 25 steals and a decent average, you should be pretty happy. All right. Those are my favorite late round stolen base sleepers. We're going to be back with some more to help you out. Talk about some late round power options and on the pitching side, some guys that can help you fill up that K stat sheet. All right. Hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it.